Hey guys, Trevor from Art Cycler here. So today we're gonna take a look at this mobile toolbox we just built. This is gonna be a submission into the Toolbox Wars competition with the support of Lazign and Abbey Tools. We threw together what we believe to be the perfect box. Taking a peek at the box here, this is the Pelican 1510 case. So it's got a handle in the back. It's got wheels, carry-on compatible, so it's the largest size you could possibly have to bring on a plane. It's got double latches, two handles here, super durable case. You know, you could ship this thing, throw it in the back of a pickup truck, do whatever you want. It's durable. Take a peek at the inside, Shazam. Right here, we got the lid organizer, and inside the box, we have three layers of foam. When you order the box, there's an option to order the lid organizer. This one for the 1510 case has five individual pockets. Also with the foam here, there's a few different options. We opted for what's called Kaizen foam. And Kaizen foam's unique because it's a bunch of tiny layers of foam glued together, cut out to fit in the box perfectly. And what you can do is you can basically put your tool down, you can trace around it, you know, use an X-Acto knife to cut around it and you basically have a perfect fit. Getting into the layers here, layer one is the tools that we use most often. Layer two, second most often. And then the bottom layer, we have stacked with stuff that we don't use as often, but it's still pretty easy to get to. And we'll check that one out as well. There's layer three. All right. We put each tool on top of the foam. You can use a regular Sharpie, like one of these guys. The black and the silver. The black will be a little bit more subtle. Silver's gonna pop really loud, but you know, you wanna make sure you cut it all the way out so you don't have a bunch of silver Sharpie everywhere. I also used a long nose marker. If you order this from Pelican or any of the dealers, they'll have an option to buy long nose marker, also a um, deep X-Acto knife. So that helps for taller tools and stuff. I also use just a standard box cutter for some of them. So basically, yeah, you trace the tool out, cut out around it. After that, thinking about like where you're gonna grab the tool is important. I cut everything out first, kind of went to grab each tool as I would naturally, and then put finger holes there. So for the finger holes, I either did just a long strip where you could, you know, grab a bunch of stuff. That was great if the tools were close together. Or I got this, which isn't as sketchy as it looks, but basically a piece of copper pipe, channel locks, blowtorch will work better, but this guy will work too and you heat this thing up and you can burn holes into the foam. If you go this route, make sure you're in a well-vented area, use a fan, don't inhale plastic fumes. So that's how we did it in short. Depending on how meticulous you wanna be, this could take you you know, a couple hours, it could take you a lifetime, whatever. It took me probably like four solid hours of tracing, cutting, organizing, and yeah, that brought us to this. This is where most of the big tools are, and that was nice because it kind of allowed me to, you know, really utilize the space well. A lot of stuff from Abbey Tools here, they make great stuff, lightweight, super durable, so it's kind of made to last a lifetime. Starting down here, I have a 32 mil flat socket. I have a bunch of different sockets. I usually keep the one in there that I'm gonna use for the bike that I'm riding, so um, the 32 works with the Fox 36. That's what's on my bike right now. That's why it's here. I also have a SRAM dub bottom bracket tool. That's from Abbey Tools. And then over here, I have the Abbey Tools E13 bottom bracket tool. A lot of times going to races, you know, I obviously built the bike around the bike that I'm riding. Also, we have a team, so it's kind of like, what do those guys have too? So these are the two bottom brackets that cover everybody. And then next to the bottom bracket tool, we have the Abbey Titanium Hammer. This uses an ESI grip. It has a replaceable head, by far the lightest hammer out there. Got the Abbey DU bushing tool the Abbey derailleur hanger tool. And for the finger hole here, I basically just kind of extended the tool. And then when I wanted to grab it, pushed it in and then left a little bit of room for my finger there. I have an OG snap-on ratchet wrench. Had this thing since I was a kid. Also the Abbey Team Edition pedal wrench. You know, your standard 15 mil there. Then you got the six and the eight mil hex there. So I got the Abbey Decade tool here with the axis plate. Both the last lifetime. And then at the top, I have the, the chain whip and the dual-sided chromies. 
kind of efficient use of space. This thing's durable. And yeah, I've actually, I've had this tool for probably, I don't know, like five or six years and you'd think it was brand new. All right, guys, so yeah, this is the bottom layer here, the chain breaker tool. We got the hammer, we got the chain whip chromy combo. We got bottom bracket sockets, air cap sockets, pedal wrench, ratchet from Snap-on, and then the Abbey derailleur hanger. That's HAG, hanger alignment gauge. But yeah, here it is. This is the bottom layer of the box. For the second layer, you can see here, I got the, the finger holes. So I burned those in with that copper pipe. And that made a super clean, clean way to grab. On toolboxes of the past, I'd do different types of handholds. And I found that like eventually over time, um, the foam would get damaged from that. So the holes here, just pinching it together seems to work really well. At the top, I have the Park Tool pick set. I got one, two, three. Basically there's a straight pick with the magnet on the back. Got a full 90 degree bend pick, also magnet on the back. And then we got this guy, slight bend there. Those are all sold in a set and I end up using these guys all the time. Also have the tape measure. I run a coil shock on my bike, measuring sag or just, you know, whatever it is. This comes in handy a lot. We also have calipers, needle nose pliers. This is that ETAP battery charger, and that's SRAM. Currently, I'm running the Axis kit on my mountain bike. No shift cables. And that was a big part of how we kind of made this so compact. So I got the charger there, and then I cut out two little pieces of foam and packed the cord in there. Yeah, then also two separate batteries there. Last thing you want to do is go to a race and have your your bike die on you. So we got extra batteries and all that stuff tucked in tidy there. This is just off of Amazon, basically a retractable magnet. So if you drop something or you, you, know, you need to grab something from a tight space, that comes in handy a lot. I also have these Nipix adjustable pliers, all three sizes. And I find that these basically are a full replacement for opening the wrenches. They come in handy all the time. So you got the big boys for if you want, you know, put a bunch of leverage on something. Medium ones are probably what I use most often. And then this guy's really nice for like brake parts or like intricate, intricate parts, super narrow there. So, and they have a, you know, totally adjustable. Yeah, these are awesome. From Nipix, I have their, their channel locks and these work great too. You can grab, you know, a round object, um, square object, just whatever shape these these come in handy all the time that's the second layer i went with just a straight line for the cuts made it easy to grab pretty straightforward did a little burnt in finger hole there and yeah there it is all right guys and now we're going to get into the the top layer of the box so this is the the layer that's used most often for this one, I have a digital design shock pump. Chose this one just because it was much more compact than the other ones out there. You can see the hose kind of threads into itself. You know, there's no like external reader or anything. So it's super slim, super sexy, super compact. Works great. Right next to that, I have our Lazine hex set. You know, all the way from one and a half to 10. And then next to that, I have the Nipix diagonal cutters. I went with the longer ones to get a little more leverage. These are cool. You can cut for a chain. You can pretty much cut through anything with these guys. And again, these are like five years old and they're still sharp. They still work great. Went with a straight rectangular cut all the way across there. I have Baco scissors. So cutting rim tape, cutting, you know, whatever it is. These are great. tried and true Pedro's tire levers. And then we have a Lazine hex block. This is a unique set. I like that it had, you know, a lot of the smaller sizes. It also has like a 90 degree bend in some of them. Compact, nice, lightweight, been working great. I also have the Silka T-handle. This is a ratcheting T-handle. It offers basically a torque spec of, I believe it's, yeah, zero to eight, doing carbon bars or anything like that. It's kind of the most compact, reliable torque wrench that we could find. And it also is all, you know, handle comes off, it's all magnetic, so you can kind of get creative with it if you need to get in tight spaces. There's also 
a piece that doesn't have the torque setting. So if you want to tighten something down and not worry about, you know, throwing it out of calibration, that's an option as well. Up top here, we got the Abbey rotor truing tool and bottle opener, probably the most uh, used tool in the box. Small design spoke wrench. We got the Abbey, the four way here. So we have a four, a five, a six, and a T25. This is actually, aside from the bottle opener, this is probably realistically the most um, commonly used tool here. Two nice little finger cutouts there to grab that. Also have the Topeak Smart Digital Gauge. This one seems to be really reliable and it's great for, you know, if you're at a race, you wanna check the tire pressure. Also have the Stans Valve Core Remover. We got Wolf 2 Chain Ring Pliers. A couple extra links there, 11 speed and 12 speed. Got a super burly tire lever too. And then here I have a snap-on, basically OG snap-on ratchet and wrench. The bits stored in there, and these are Silka bits that will work with screwdriver here. They'll also work with the Silka T-handle. And that's everything from like a T10, uh, T25, and then we have a bunch of Allen sizes in there too. Cool, so yeah, this is the top layer. I'm stoked on how this came out. Took a lot of time to kind of organize everything in a way that felt natural to grab it out in a hurry, and I feel like this is what I use most often. Here's a better look at that Kaizen foam. You can see all the different layers glued together here, and yeah, the possibility to really, you know, cut everything out and get creative with it. Last layer of the box is the lid. You know, you have five pockets here. We had a lot of stuff left to fit in the box and this is stuff that changes all the time. One really cool thing about this was I found this company, Adventure Tool Company out of Colorado. They make these like super durable mesh bags that happen to be the exact same size as these three and this long pocket here. Basically within there, you know, you, you have this set, I think it was like 34 bucks made in the USA, and you can pack all kinds of other, you know, other tools in here. So checking out in this one, you know, I got a brush, I have flathead screwdriver, a bunch of plugs, a chain checker, I got an E13 bottom bracket tool, and I use this mainly for like swapping out chain rings on the E13 cranks, where the, the Abbey one won't fit up the spindle. And yeah, this one is one that I don't feel bad like hammering on or whatever. We also have, I was talking about that Silka tool. This is just a straight, straight piece you can put in there. You can attach a bit at the bottom there. This is a cool little Amazon find, a swiveling T25. Use this a lot as well. There's that guy. In this one here, got this nice little, little pouch. Currently I have a park tool pad spreader in there. Also a bunch of SRAM tools here. So we got the Axis bead tension tool, normal Eagle bead tension tool. We have this little guy, which is good for taking like bubbles out of um, stickers, out of rim tape, out of you know frame protector tape, whatever. Pad spreader tools, reverb, bleed tool, hose cutter, more bleed stuff. Yeah, so there's that one. Up top, this guy basically have my Garmin computer in there. Have this little box with like DU bushings, rotor bolts, all kinds of just random little bits. Always changing them out depending on what's going on. I got extra SRAM code brake levers. So there's that guy. In the top one, I have a bunch of lubes. You got this Formula D shock syrup, some slick honey. I got DeMontex Bio Green Lube. And I also have, you always need blue Loctite. There's that down here. A lot of times I'd put a bleed kit in here. Right now I got a got a nice rag, so doing chain lube, cleaning stuff up. Also have another E13 bottom bracket tool, box cutter, a bunch of CO2s, and a bunch of um, latex gloves. There's a lot of room in here, and you can really kind of get creative and fill that with whatever you need, depending on the event, the race, you know, whatever you're doing. This is great. So yeah, this is the box. It's pretty lightweight. Again, it's uh, the 1510 case from Pelican. Potentially bring this on as a carry-on, depending on TSA regulations, CO2s, a lot of the lubes, a lot of the long tools you have to pack, you know, in your bike bag or something. But 
is a cool feature knowing that you have a case that's small and compact and you could potentially fly with. We'd like to thank Lazine, thank Abbey Tools for helping us put this together, everyone on the Toolbox Wars page for kind of inspiration. This is something that we're excited to get out to the races and use and hopefully we see some of you guys out there. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about why we chose certain tools, why some tool that you think is really important isn't in here, anything like that, uh, drop a link in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful. Peace.